The stamp's appeal among collectors has inevitably resulted in rare examples fetching exorbitant prices. But how much can a stamp be? Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. For this video, we'll discover a look at the $9 million Magenta stamp. But before anything else, please leave a like on the video and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell down below so you won't miss our future videos. Without any more interruptions, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the bees sold a British Guino 1 cent magenta postal stamp from 1856 for a record $9.5 million, making it the only one of its types remaining in existence. The high price, which includes the buyer's premium, makes a 1 inch by 1 and a quarter inch stamp printed in black on magenta paper the most expensive item by weight and size ever sold at auction, according to the auction house. During the crowded auction, an anonymous telephone bidder bought the stamp. Every time it has come up for auction and sold, it has brought the highest price ever paid for a stamp, said David Redden, the worldwide chairman of Books and Manuscripts at Sotheby's. It has always been the world's most famous stamp. It is one of these objects around which a huge mystique has grown up over the years, he said. According to CBS News reporter Jan Crawford, it's also the only British colony stamp that Queen Elizabeth does not possess. The one-cent magenta stamp is so valuable that it's considered to be the most valuable item in the world when size and weight are taken into consideration. More than 150 years ago, the one-cent magenta was printed in the former British territory of British Guiana in South America. Only a few hundred were ever produced, and in 1873, a 12-year-old kid found one of the stamps in his uncle's cellar and it was all but forgotten, according to Barron. Why I care about a stamp? Crawford asked him. It's history. It's a way of seeing how the world was connected. It's a way of thinking about how people are connected, Barron said. The lone surviving one cent magenta stamp has also linked a few individuals who have paid a lot of money to acquire it, including an heir to an American chemical business and now renowned designer Stuart Weitzman. Weitzman heard about the stamp from none other than Donald Duck when he was five years old. In 1952, Donald Duck starts one of his get rich quick schemes, a search for the one cent magenta in a comic book that's currently on display at the Smithsonian. He goes to the jungles of British Guana to try to find this relic, and I don't know how it ended up, but obviously, I got the stamp and he didn't, Weitzman said. Weitzman grew up in Queens, New York collecting stamps, but there is one big void in his stamp book, a place for the one cent magenta. I love geography, Weitzman said, so it provided a bit of an education. A lot of fun, it was a childhood thing. You know, I eventually gave it up. You thought you gave it up, Crawford said. Well, yeah, I discovered girls. That was the end of the stamps, Weitzman said. That is until John Johnny Dupont, the stamp's former owner, died in prison. Dupont, the heir to the chemical fortune, was in prison for the third degree murder of a gold medal wrestler as depicted by Steve Carell in the film Foxcatcher. Dupont even attempted to use the stamp as a get out of jail free pass according to Barron. The Smithsonian display makes a one cent magenta more available to the general public than it has ever been. For Weitzman though, this goes beyond stamp collecting. He treasures one of a kind items like his 1941 Yankee signed Cognac Spectator Pumps. Then there's Weitzman Weitzman's stamps book from his youth. His 60 year long childhood search has finally come to an end. The National Postal Museum will have the one cent magenta on display through November, then it'll be up to Weissman to decide what to do with it. The previous record for a single stamp auction was 2.87 million Swiss francs, about $2.2 million, and it was established in 1966 for the Treskiing Yellow, a Swedish stamp that is a color mistake of an 1855 shilling stamp. The estate of the late multimillionaire John Dupont, an heir to the Dupont Chemical Empire, sold the British Guinea stamp in 2010. He died in jail in 2010 at the age of 72. Dupont was serving a life sentence for the 1996 murder of David Schultz, a champion American wrestler. The Royal Philatelic Society of London had previously reauthenticated the issue, which Dupont, an ardent stamp collector, had bought for $935,000 in 1980. The stamp's validity had already been established in 1935. One of the world's earliest postal stamps is the British Guino One Cent Magenta. After supplies from Britain, where the stamps were produced, were delayed in 1856, the local postmaster in British Guiana, now the country of Guyana, requested a newspaper to issue some stamps. The South American nation has a few four cent stamps left, but this is the sole one cent stamp. According to the Sotheby's, the stamp has not been on display in public since 1987. Elvernon Vaughn, a 12 year old kid residing in British Guana with his family, found the stamp in 1873. It was among his family documents that he discovered it. He retained it in his collection and subsequently sold it to a British Guana collector. It was discovered in the United Kingdom in 1878 and bought by Count Felipe La Renatier von Ferre, a well-known stamp collector. The Count's collection was given to the Berlin Postal Museum before taken by France as war reparations from Germany 
Company and auctioned in 1922. It had been sold many times before being acquired by DuPont. The Eurasian Pacific Wildlife Conservation Foundation, which DuPont sponsored, will get a portion of the profits from the sale. That's it for today, you guys. If you all enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll put out for you guys. We're signing off for now, but we'll surely catch you all in the next one.